Uh, anyway, so you know, so that was that was the second part. So this is something very different. Um, and the intuition is, is sort of similar to how natural language process and you know, natural <coughs> language, uh, you know, like translation and understanding is done with your typical deep models, RM and transformer, where it is learning stuff from a bunch of samples and it is outputting the symbolic representation. Only instead of outputting, you know, a sentence for a human to read with deep symbolic regression, where uh, the, what's being returned are mathematical equations. So fully symbolic, and uh, we will see how this is done. Uh, a little bit of the history behind this, which predates deep learning. The approaches I will touch on this, of course, deal with deep learning. And then uh, at the end, we'll see some really interesting application of this work and talk about why it's important. Okay, so first some background of deep symbolic regression. And here's the basic idea. We have a report function that compares the function that we've learned to a bunch of uh, historical data. So we have, you can imagine having, you know, a giant matrix with a bunch of uh, input values, uh, scalar input values and a scalar output value. We're just trying to find a function that fits that, but not necessarily linear. You wanna have things like trigonometric functions, exponents, logarithms, all that stuff. So, we use the reward function to compare that to the historical data. We use that uh, loss information to recompute a new function using this, what's called an expression tree, which looks a lot like the syntax tree from LNNs. And then we, uh, you know, we iterate on that until we reach convergence. Yes. So the bottom line is what the goal of this is, is to understand like some complex physical system with a very compact mathematical equation. So the key concept is this idea of an expression tree. So here is a mathematical equation and here's the associated expression tree. Pretty easy to understand. Now here is the key difference though, with the L and N in the syntax tree, which is basically the same thing, so the language is different. But with the L and Ns, that's embedded in the neural infrastructure. Here, it's the output, which is the key difference. So just some kind of historical notes about this, conjecture to be NP hard, probably is, but I don't think it's ever been proven. Genetic programming has been kind of the most popular way to do this in the past. And you can kind of tell why. I mean, it's you've got these kind of discrete elements. You can mutate and make changes to, you know, what mathematical operators in there and so on. And of course, probably not too surprisingly, uh, genetic programming has scalability issues. And of course, you can have uh, other issues as well, such as, uh, overly complicated uh, equations. All right, so now let's talk about deep symbolic regression. This is a paper out of a place called Lawrence Livermore National Labs out in California. Uh, if you peeked ahead at some of the later slides, you'll understand why this particular um, lab did the research. And if not, I'll surprise you uh, a little bit later. So the idea is, is that you've got an RNN that at each step is generating a probability distribution over the symbols in the expression tree. And I can use the RNN to generate a bunch of candidate expressions. 
And then I can evaluate those candidate expressions with the loss function. Notice the loss function is the candidate expression itself in, it, in this case, which means that I can't differentiate that because it changes all the time. So I'm going to use this kind of risk seeking reward uh, in more of an RL kind of context. And, and we'll talk about all that. And the results of the reward, we're using that to retrain the parameters of the RNN and it iterates and, until convergence. So, so I just have a question. So when it's generating a distribution of expressions, so is that saying like that's the distribution of expressions within this tree or within like one node? Um, yeah, this will become clear. Yeah. So here's the overall approach. And the way I organize this part of the presentation is I'll highlight a line from the pseudocode and then we'll show a few slides. So the first one we'll talk about is sampling expressions from the R. So if you're familiar with genetic programming, you'll kind of see um, you know, some interesting parallels to this. And it was kind of clear to me that, you know, the people who worked on this paper probably had some experience or at least read that literature very thoroughly um, because there's this kind of whole idea of, uh, you know, creating kind of a, a generation or a, a group of candidates of each iteration. But the key difference is that we're generating the candidates with this RNA. So here's how the sampling works. When you, you generate the expression tree in the RNN, you start out with kind of this null input and you're entering in the parent and sibling of the symbol you want to generate next in the expression tree. And it produces this probability distribution over those symbols. And you know, since we're sampling from it, you randomly pick one according to that probability distribution. So here we picked the division symbol. There's no sibling because it was the first one. And then we do that again. Okay. Now, deciding on uh, which uh, symbols previously generated are the parent or sibling or the one in your current iteration, they provide you know this little algorithm for doing that. I'm not going to go into the details there, um, but it's it's honestly not that hard to understand. So that's to just generate the expression. So that's assuming we've got the RNN, boom, now we've got, well, not just an expression, we've got a whole bunch of them that we want to sample uh, from that population. So then the next thing is this step called refinement. Now, this is kind of interesting because I've seen in a lot of papers at the intersection of neuro and symbolic, where this concept of refinement seems to come up quite a bit. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, refinement step. So there's a couple of things that um, you'll see when we talk about an alternative approach to deep symbolic regression are pretty important. So first is they look at the minimum and maximum length of the expression. And they, they'll throw it out if it's beyond that. They'll also disallow things like the children of an operator can't all be constants because that makes no sense. That's just a constant itself. Also, they want to avoid things like having uh, the logarithm of an exponent with the same base because that's an identity. They also avoid uh, trigonometric functions that are nested because, and there's no technical reason for that but it's mostly because in the scientific literature and in physics, you never see nested trigonometric functions happen in, uh, you know, in reality. So anyway, so that's refinement. But the, the crux of it is they're using information about the syntax to further optimize the result. And you know, I think that's great, you can do that. And the other thing that they do is they do constant optimization. And so by constant optimization, if you think about it, if your expression is producing constants, does it really matter what they are? So you just know that if you just treat it as, hey, there's a constant there, just try to find the values of those constants that optimize that expression's fit to the data. 
makes sense, right? Um, and it's interesting because I'll show you the follow on paper. Actually, some of the other papers kind of say, oh, well, you know, this is not really end to end and we will show results with and without constant optimization. But, um, you know, I couldn't imagine not wanting to do it in practice, honestly. Okay, so going on to the next step is uh, computing the reward of each expression. So again, here is this normalized uh, root mean squared error. But again, since you're actually using the function in question, uh, it's not differentiable. So this is why we're, we're using this framework. So then what we're going to do is we're gonna compute the top, we're gonna to find the top one minus epsilon quantile of expressions. And so the idea is there was this idea from reinforcement learning uh, called, uh, you know, uh, risk avoiding policy. Here they're looking at the opposite. They're looking at a risk seeking policy because you're trying to maximize the fit to the data. So you're trying to find the highest reward value. So next is then to compute the risk seeking policy gradient. So they should have a proposition in the paper and uh, here's how it's done. And of course, you're just going to do sampling over that with Monte Carlo sampling. And they also found that when they added this, um, what they call entropy gradient points, just an extra term uh, to consider as part of the reward, they got further improvement. Apparently, this is something that has also previously been used in other uh, symbolic regression approaches. And based on uh, based on those gradient computations, then they do their updates in kind of the normal way. So here's some of the results. Uh, they compared it. Uh, they're showing examples of learned expressions. And actually the experiments here are really extremely thorough. Um, this was a conference paper, but it had, um, I think another like five, 10 pages just of describing all the different um, pieces of software they evaluated against, what conditions those were run on. Uh, you know, this was, they even compared against commercial packages because I guess symbolic regression has been around for quite some time. 